Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the podcast. I am Fofo. And I am Bones and you're here with us on Hashtag Behind Relationship Goals. Now, if you haven't noticed, on our YouTube channel, we just uploaded something very, very important. It was our very first and quite possibly our only video of the wedding. The, I wouldn't say it was an SDE. I think it's more of a wedding video. Yeah, definitely not an SDE. SDE means same, same day, day edit. edit. Um, but this was just some snippets that we felt we wanted to share with everyone. I think we were very, not secretive. I think we, we withheld a lot of the details. Yeah. A lot of the personal details. But this video, I think, was something that we really did want to share. And Bob Nicolas, their team is so amazing. They did such an amazing job. Before we get to the video, let's talk about how it led up to that. Because I think that's also an integral part of like this whole conversation that we're going to have. Because when we were planning the wedding, Mick and I were thinking if we were going to have a wedding video or not. Oh, yeah. Wow. I completely forgot that we had that time yeah. where we were thinking, are we going to have a video or not? And the reason behind that was because we had, we had talked about what we wanted like the aspects of the wedding that we really wanted and we felt that were important and at one point we were like do we really need this wedding video because we have so much footage from our travels i mean there's just so much going on people will be taking videos anyway and that was our initial i guess reaction or conclusion this is bringing back so many memories oh yeah there's one point i have and i tried making very early this is like the first two months of planning palang, which you might not remember anymore so at this point first two months of planning i said let's not have video people or photo people okay and my reasoning behind that was that sometimes there are moments in life that are just really nice just being memories. And I know that's unheard of in this day and age. Yeah. It's unheard of given our career, you know, being artists and being on social media. And I found it so intriguing and enticing to be able to do a wedding, a major milestone in our lives, and not have it documented digitally at all. I will admit, I was very against this because... And she was, super. When you're young, you just have your whole wedding in mind. And then you have this plan of what you want to go down. I mean, I've had a Pinterest board for the longest time. Since we first got engaged, I made that Pinterest board. And I was not going to let it go to waste. So I said, no, we need to have a wedding video. And he kept asking me, why do you want a wedding video? What's so important about a wedding video? If you can tell me why you want it, then you will have it. Yeah, you. I, I needed bones to justify to me why she really wanted it. Other than the fact that... It's down just the what line, people do. No, down one, it's just what people do. And two, down the line, are you going to actually take time out of your day and say, today is the day I will look back at all our wedding memorabilia <laughs> and think it's amazing. When for me, if I tell you, hey, Bones, you remember our wedding? And you know it's those feelings that make it amazing. It's not the photos or the videos. So that's where we were first two months in. So at this point, we were like, no, I was like, no video. Yeah, and I was like, I want a video, but I have to really imagine and think about why do I really want this video? Like, why is it so important to me? Yeah, uh, and what happened later on? So how did we change? How did I change my mind? Or how did you change my mind? After we had that conversation, I had been watching videos of weddings, just trying to do research on the people that I might want to work with. And you kept telling me, Bones, all these wedding videos look the same. They all have the same theme. They all do the same drone shot. Yeah. You know, they, it all looks the same. It's just different people. Tell me again why you want this video. And at the back of my head, I was like, sorry. wait, no pressure. I really want this video. But I mean, is this a thesis or something? Do I need to like come up with an explanation? But Mikael really did have a good point. And I wanted to make sure that deep down inside, I knew why I wanted it or if I really wanted it for that fact. And I kept watching and watching and watching. And I came down to a couple of videographers and videography studios. There was like a a couple of videos that I watched that had something different about them and these were Bob Nicholas's videos and I showed Mikael and he was like it's kind of the, the same thing and I said yeah 
but we can add our little flavor into that. Yeah, you know what? I just remembered that I asked you that question. I was like, you need to be able to justify to me why you really want it. So what I was actually looking for in Bones was that I really wanted her to think about it and know what she wanted out of the video. Because when I would see all these templated videos, let's be honest, I mean, you have the Mm -hmm. drone shots and then the product shots and then the ring shots and then separate uh, the shots of the groom getting ready and the or the veil ready. yung sa veil and I told her is that what you really want if that's what you really want then let me know but if it isn't I need you to have a fully formed idea of, of why you, you want. want this video like what do you want to see in this video because if she was able to explain that to me then that let me know that hey she really wants this and it's going to be important to her. And I will support her. Right? Because if it's a template of something else, a template that everybody else does, then how does that become important to you? It's just like, uh, how do you form that real connection to that video? Yes. And then I was also thinking about that. For a lot of people, and for many people, a wedding is such a big milestone in their lives. People love documenting big moments in their lives. For us, we may not be as sentimental as most people, but I knew that I wanted this documented because I wanted to look back on it. And I wanted to make sure that the moments that I loved about weddings were captured there in that video. But at the same time, I'm not saying or we're not saying that the videos that you already see that have already been produced by the myriad of wedding videographers out there, there's nothing wrong with it. Yeah, nothing wrong at all. But when we were preparing for our wedding, we wanted to be very efficient with our money. Mm -hmm. Uh, We wanted to be very efficient with the time and effort that we put in it. So I just wanted Bones to be a bit more thoughtful when it came to choosing what she really wanted in it. Of course, I have nothing against the usual stuff. I think for our personalities, we just didn't want anything that seemed too stagey because we already do that for work. I think yeah. that was like one thing because a lot of them... No, you that was to, definitely a consideration. And a lot of our videographer friends say that for weddings, you really have to direct the couple because a lot of them aren't used to being in front of the camera. That's true. And for us, since that's our job, we kind of didn't want to do that on our wedding day. So we just decided to come up with something different and then eventually bond set up a meeting with the team of bob nicholas and when we met them we had this very vague idea of how we wanted the videos Mm -hmm. and the photos to be in our heads we said i don't want to have to act for the camera ever like just (laughs) chase us around and whatever we're doing whatever shots you get how it edits just capture it I don't need the amazing drone shots. I don't need the shots of the rings and the shoes and the suits. All I want is just the moments. I told them also that there's. I don't really have a song for you guys. Bones has a an opening dance song that she wanted to provide. But other than that, there's nothing else I had that came to mind. When it came to the cutting and the transitions, I told them, don't give me too much flair. Keep it as simple as possible. And basically, in a nutshell, what I was saying, story mode lang dapat. Yeah. So whatever happened throughout that wedding, that's what you put in. Even though it doesn't look fancy or flary or my bonggang moment, that's okay. Yeah. Because it's seeing those real moments that will actually make jog our memory when we see it 10 Mm -hmm. years from now 20 years from now and i think they hit the nail on the head eventually when they uh, showed us their first edit so after the whole wedding happened of course bob and his team were there they shot the wedding and we told them specifically that we didn't want an sde or a same day edit Reasoning, because we didn't want anything rushed. We were looking for more of a story, like Mikael just mentioned. And SDEs weren't our priority, basically. Yeah, and I can sympathize with the editing team. Because if you're doing an SDE, now this is a bit more technical, you need to have a framework. So you need to have a template, and you need to shoot the shots that will go into that template. But since you were asking them for something that was not Not templated, templated. it just didn't make sense to ask them to do something that wasn't within what they usually do. And that was okay with us. I don't think that SDEs make or break a wedding. 
I think it's the experience that you, the bride and groom, and all the guests go through. Mm-hmm. I think that's the most important part. And once we realized that, we were like, yeah, it's okay. We don't need an SDE. For a lot of people, they want an SDE because they're so caught up in the moment. Like when you're doing the wedding, like if you're the bride, you're focused on your groom ah, or the yeah. people around you. So you don't really see what's happening. So I think if you do have an SDE, it's great to like see the moments that you were experiencing yourself. So you're seeing it from somebody else's um, perspective. Yeah, I agree. That does make sense. Especially for those na medyo natataranta or someone who gets anxious mm-hmm. or or scared or medyo cold feet. It's hard to live in the moment. Yeah. So I can see that. I can see why SD- SDEs would be such a huge thing for other couples and other brides and grooms. Eventually, we got the edit, which was just a couple of days ago. We watched it, and as I mentioned a while ago, on the very first draft, we were like, that's fine. We texted Bob Nicolas' mm-hmm. team and said, you know what? We don't need anything revised. Whatever is here, we're going to upload right now. We love it. <laughs> it's great. Most of you have probably seen it. If not, it is on Mikael's YouTube channel. And right now, we are actually going to have a, a little reaction video. <laughs> yeah, so I actually got this idea from um, some of the Westworld YouTube episodes that i've seen so after a westworld episode is done youtubers uh grab videos and react to it Mm -hmm. and i found it so interesting because they were giving extra details that you otherwise would not have seen if you watched it just once or if you're just a casual viewer yeah and i told bones why don't we do it with this one with our wedding video because we can so give many so much that we insight can, yeah we can give so much insight and context and i think insight and context with entertainment with content with anything really with any story just makes the whole experience richer yeah so we're trying out something new with the podcast and we hope you guys enjoy so here we go reaction video to our wedding video what, what? okay game, let's do it okay Bonizi is going to play the wedding video on the smartphone here in front of us, and she is going to put a picture in picture with her amazing editing skills over here for you guys. Or here. Somewhere there. That's fine. In three, two, one. Action. I bet what? you guys are wondering why we had two weddings. Um, Megan is here to tell that story. Yeah, so initially we were supposed to just have the Jan 25, but we wanted to do something a little more intimate. and have. Oh, this was really nice. I think the opening was so last minute, spot on. Before Mick and I went out to introduce ourselves, he said, you better make cuento. I'm going to leave the floor to you. It's up to you. Because usually I'm the shy type and Mikael is the one that tells all the stories. Okay, I wouldn't say that Bonizi is shy. Obviously, she's a host. She knows how to go on stage and talk. But her weakness is in storytelling. For whatever reason, she can't tell a story straight. It's either too short and she misses out on details or it's too long. She goes around the topic over and over again that you get lost in the story and you don't know what's happening anymore. So I said, Bones, this time on our wedding, you know these stories, okay? You know them by heart. (laughs) So you are going to tell stories tonight. And that is what I did on our wedding night. I opened the floor. Yeah, and and you were able to do so. I think you did a great job. I think that was your best storytelling moment ever. Really? Usually when people ask us, what's the story behind Bones and Fofo? I'm just like, Fofo, please tell the story. Because I... I am in pain when I tell this story. I can't yeah, say it. Yeah, it's horrible. Enough. She just can't say it. I, like I said, it's either too short or way too long. Let's talk about the intro. From the drone shot cutting to me and Bones talking to our guests. I think that was amazing. Yeah. Because it was so simple. I mean, you opened up with a wide shot which gave you a sense of the vibe and the atmosphere of our reception. And automatically, you go to us which focuses on the two subjects of the night and of the video. So that was masterful. And sometimes it's the simplicity of the edit which really hammers home the message. So I'm just saying, I'm kind of getting technical (laughs) here and emotional at the same time. But I enjoy talking about it. I enjoy good work. And I know that the team of Bob Nicolas put in a lot of thought into what are they going to make the first shot or the first opening shots. And that's difficult, especially for something conceptually new. Lawful husband, 
according to the right of our Holy Mother Church. Yes, I do. I'm making this mistake. Do you give yourself to Him as His wife? Yes, I do. Do you accept Him as your husband? This is my derp husband? side, by the way. Yes, I do. Mikael, do you take... <laughs> Explain that. What is your derp side? People need to know this, okay? Okay. So, you know how when you're in photos and people ask you, what's your angle? And usually I say, wala akong angle. <laughs> Just for kicks. But honestly, I prefer my right side for, you know, because I feel like I look younger. And this side, I feel like I tend to look derpy, like a meme. Because, I don't know, for some reason, it's just like rounder on this side. And that's how I see my angle on my left. And so. sakto sakto, because uh, I would consider my sharper side to be the left side. So when we're together and we're posing for the camera, I tend to angle this way. She tends to angle this way. To the right, yeah. We're both giving our best sides according to us. So yeah, like that was the first reaction I had. I was like crying and I was like, oh, so, so emotional. But oh my gosh, it's my derp side. <laughs> it's my derp <laughs> angle. All right, you know what? We already have a lot of comments from this part. Okay. Like some people were commenting... One minute in, they were crying already yeah. because of this part. <laughs> because of the derp side. Just kidding. Because of the derp side. <laughs> yeah. Um, actually, the first time we watched the video, Mick and I were already pretty teary-eyed here because it reminded us, oh my God, I'm Okay. Uh, what? Yeah. Because every time that I remember that moment, it's just, it, it's the feels, man. Yeah. You know, my feels when I watched this video, it wasn't the intense kind of, oh my God, I'm crying. It was just a really nice Heartfelt. reminiscing kind of emotion. Very touching. Yeah, yeah. It was well. like, ah, oh, this was really, really nice. According to the right of our Holy Mother Church. Yes, I do. Do you give yourself to her as her husband? Yes, I do. Do you accept her as your lawful wife? Yes, I do. I saw one comment that said na when they listen to the podcast of us talking about our wedding na hindi siya makapaniwala na ang dami daw luha. Like, ang dami natin iyak nung wedding. And then when they saw this video, they were like, oo nga, no? And I saw it. I was like, oh my gosh, I feel like there's a swimming pool on my face. <laughs> that's how I felt when I watched I was like, dang, that's a lot of tears. Yeah, the first wedding in Calaruega was uh, quite wet. <laughs> Can you rephrase that, please? <laughs> that does not sound. <laughs> it was a splashy wedding. Is that it better? does not sound better. Oh, still not good. Uh, okay. It was a tearful wedding. I know. <laughs> a wet, splashy, tearful wedding. <laughs> if that makes sense. <laughs> if we're to cut this video up, the first three and a half minutes, up to the point where I say why we're called Bones and Fofo. So I think I explained first why you were called Bones to yeah. our guests. I really appreciated the setup of Bob Nicholas for that video. Yeah. It was like it's like the intro. The introduction. It was the intro before the title screen. And saktong soon after three and a half minutes, you have the title screen Bones and Fofo. And it was so nice. Like kiniliga ko na Bones and Fofo yung nilagay nila because usually people would put the first names of the couple. We were very specific to our wedding coordinators and everybody involved that we wanted to be addressed Bones and Fofo and not Mikael and Megan because the people closest to us knew that we called each other Bones and Fofo. So it would be kind of weird if it was just Mikael and Megan. Parang hindi kami yon. Weird enough. Like, names yeah. natin yon. I think we can easily say that over the past 10 years that we've been together, people have heard Bones and Fofo more than Mikael and Megan. Uh, 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 uh. Oh, hubba, hubba. I think it's very, very nice to point out that that kiss was the very first kiss we had on our YouTube channel. <laughs> yes, you're right. And you know what? It's so rewarding because I think we have over a hundred or close to two hundred videos on my on on the YouTube channel. Hello, girl. 
And apparently, I read in the comments that people noticed that I had never, ever shown a kiss. We've never even shown a kiss on Instagram or on social media for that matter. Up until this point. And I was telling someone that I was really waiting for a moment. Like, I didn't want to show a kiss just because it's a very intimate moment for Mm -hmm, us and mm -hmm. for anyone, really. And I wanted to make it very important. Even though people might not know this, at least for us, it felt important. And when we showed this one, it was just really nice that I had some longtime viewers comment and said, oh my God, Bones and Fofo actually kissed. This is the first time this happened. And yeah, the feeling was just so satisfying that some of the viewers noticed that. So thank you to whoever commented and whoever noticed it really. Also for weddings, you know how girls always look forward to the groom's reaction to see how they would act to your friend walking in. Well, for Mikael, his favorite part of the wedding is the kiss. And there's a good reason behind it. Because he's like, I wonder how they're going to kiss. Like, is it going to be a smack? Is the girl going to go in first? Is the guy going to go in first? Is it going to be long? Like, he always, like, thinks of things like this. Like a movie. And there are many different kinds of kisses that you see in weddings. There are some that's very awkward. Yung alam mong medyo takot or medyo, medyo may, may anxiety at may kaba. Uh, there are those who want to get it over with very quickly because they don't like maybe showing affection in, in public. In front of people. Like so you want smack. Smack lang siya. There are others naman na medyo sobra. Yung talaga, whoa, whoa, whoa. Teka lang. So Bones and I, we would talk sometimes. And like, darn Bones. Our kiss has to be amazing. <laughs> it has to be like on point. Yung saktong balance lang. According to us, of course. I mean, this is a very subjective thing. And I didn't feel any pressure. No, none at all. And over the years <laughs> that we've been to weddings, we would always scrutinize, oh, wow, that was a really yeah. good kiss. Yeah. And I was like, ah, no, that was like too much. Too long, too long. So we would always scrutinize. And sorry to all the weddings that we went to. <laughs> Naging critique na tayo ng, ano, ng wedding kisses. But we would pull experience from that. And we would say, ah, Bones, I like the length of this. I like yung nangyari dito. Yun yung gagawin natin, ah. <laughs> So, Bones, why don't you share this one part of the kiss which you know you borrowed from another wedding? Which one? Oh, oh, okay. Mikael will never forget this wedding. And it was a wedding of a friend abroad. It was actually Rolene's wedding. Rolene, Miss World 2014, who got crowned after me. We went to her wedding in South Africa. And as soon as they said, you may now kiss the bride, she held her groom's, her husband's head from the back. And she pulled him towards her so she was the one leading the kiss and when that happened Mikael was like wow Ooh, that's so nice that's so sexy it was sexy <laughs> wait it's true it's true it was really nice and it's nice for the girl to take initiative and, no, and, and, and it looked nice yeah and the reason why I'm particular about these things is because even in teleseries uh, even in our work you need to kind of know how to block yourself so that you can kiss for the camera. Yeah. I mean, you don't want to kiss your leading lady and hindi siya kita or hindi ka kita or you guys look like two uh, ducklings <laughs> bumping their beaks together. <laughs> it's just funny. Wait, have you seen that video of the couple that had never kissed before? Yes. And then <laughs> they kiss for the first time. Yes. And, uh, you know, that's real. That happens, dude. I can imagine that happening. I haven't seen it, but I can imagine that happening. But yes, so that is the backstory behind the kiss. And I am very, very happy with it, to be honest with you. Yeah. Are you happy with the kiss that I gave you? Yeah, I'm very, very happy. What about the little jiggly jump that I made at the end? <laughs> oh, wait, I didn't see that. Can I see wait, that? Wait, look. Oh, yeah, no, that was super cute. That was super cute. And I like our like... Because oh, right I get... After. Whenever I get kilig, I get like jiggly. Yeah, Bones has this um, tick. It's a nuance where if she gets excited, she starts thumping her feet. Mm-hmm. Or if it's super excited, she'll thump both feet, which turns into a mini jump. They didn't get it on the video, but 
the, during the wedding in Subic, I was actually thumping my feet the whole time because I was so killing. <laughs> when I get killing, my feet just go. Tick, 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 She's tick, like tick, thumper. Yeah, and then after after the ceremony, everyone was like, "Your feet were so funny." I was just like, "Yeah, I was so killing." <laughs> right after we talk about our nicknames, Bones and Fofo, you see a couple of shots of us dancing and enjoying the night. And, and it was very short. It was very short. But also, also because our memories of the party part of our reception were, were very also short. very, very short. So it was very apt. I think I think that was a very significant <laughs> and very symbolic of our own memories. But what I remember from that night was, you know, Shempre, like when you're at a wedding, you have drinks and I didn't even need to drink anything for me to feel super happy and ecstatic about whatever was happening. I just had like a good jolly vibe and you could see me dancing by the tables because I wanted to. I wanted to like feel free about it and enjoy. And I said, I'm not going to hold back on whatever emotions or feelings I'm going through. If I feel like dancing, I'm going to dance in the middle of like the eating area. And an hour and a half later, nakahilata na rin siya dun sa mga tables. <laughs> Oh, this moment is actually really nice. People may not have realized it, but that was the first time that I saw Bones in her wedding dress. Oh, was it? Oh, yeah, it was the that first That was the first, first time. Look. So we got, we got ready and we were taking family photos. So me with my family and Bones with her family. And then they said, hey, can we get the photo of you guys together before you go to the church? And we were like, yeah, sure, why not? So they said, oh, turn around the man, let Megan enter first. So yeah, like, so okay, this is probably okay. like the only... St- "Quote unquote staged moment." No, but it was actually just okay with me. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Regardless, I mean, I also wanted a bit of suspense. I didn't want you coming around the corner. Yeah. pa <laughs> walking to me, but yeah, and tapped me on the shoulder. I said I didn't want to look, but of course I looked eventually. <laughs> With this slow mode, the flower moment going out, and Mick and I were like, uh, they didn't show it. They didn't show me eating the flower petals. The slow mo of that shot coming out of the church, I am 1 million percent sure they have a shot where it goes straight into your mouth <laughs> and you're semi choking on the petals. That's gonna be so funny. Here's the deal I asked for the raw footage from Bob Nicholas, and after the ECQ ends, I'm gonna get that and I'm gonna make a groom's cut. Of this wedding video. And I want it to be pure comedy. If possible. I don't know how it's going to happen. I haven't seen the footage. But the extended clip of the petals going into Bones' mouth will be there. Okay, before we start on this part, this made me so makes me so emotional right now. Oh, why? I don't know. Just seeing mom, I miss her. Ah, okay, gotcha. Like she's in the states now, so it just makes me miss her more. Ah, <laughs> Bonizi is crying. But anyway, the next part of this video is the interview part. How did we get to this kind of concept in this video? Do you remember? While we were meeting with Sinabob, we tried to think of different ideas on how we could make this video seem more like us and one of the things that i noticed when i watched wedding videos it's very sde ish meaning you just show the day itself but you only see tidbits about the couple and about the relationship and it leaves you kind of hanging as a viewer because you want to like know what the love story is i mean so you kind of want to know what the love story nila i thought hey who would better know the most about this couple aside from them than the people that they love. Diba? The people closest to them would know the most about the couple. And I proposed to Mikael, why not have something very documentary-ish style? I also remember one very important point why we have interviews here. In our lives, it's very clear that there have been segments throughout time. One where we live with our families, 
to where we lived uh, through our work. We were in GMA working through our teleseries 24-7 at, cer- at certain points. And another point where we grew with coffee and got to know a completely different group of people through our coffee. So if you chart out our lives, there are like three or four different groups who we grew up with, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they know one another. Yeah. So my family, the work group, my uh, friends, her friends, the coffee friends that we've made. So you have a handful of groups and we wanted them to know about one another because each of those groups knew something a little bit different about us because they got to know us in different points of our lives. So imagine if my family got to know stories from my coffee friends and my work friends and what they experienced with me and Bones and that was the point of having interviews from our different circles. Yeah, they always say that you have different personalities with the different groups that you hang out with. And it's kind of the same for us. I mean, siempre iba yung galawan namin when we're with family. And we act differently when we're with friends and with different groups of friends at that. So we just thought, like Mikael said, we wanted them to see different sides of us through the eyes of our friends. So loud and obnoxious, and like whenever he laughs, it's like ha 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 I love I love this edit because it's so real. Like your laugh is so ha ha ha. And they were able to catch that laugh because they put the lapel inside my suit. <laughs> I love this. It's so Mikael. Whenever you get to talk to Mikael or you see so him, am I that loud? You're you're pretty loud, full Really? Like your voice is not. I'm not saying you're like shouting or anything, but your normal voice is loud. Like my normal voice is very soft, but your normal voice is like parang nagmomodulate na kumakanta na ewan. Well, uh, my singing talent comes out even when I speak. Parang yung sa mga sa nasa theater yung abot hanggang likod. Ganon. Really? Oh, ganon yung voice mo. Who knew? Probably everybody, everybody except me. It was good. Uh, you know, he made her better. She made him better. Megan is the, is the polish and class that sometimes Mikael lacks. And I honestly think Mikael is the solid rock that sometimes Megan lacks. I think this is the part that a lot of people look forward to, is seeing the bride walk down the aisle, watching the groom's reaction. It was very, I don't know, how do I I put this? I don't think there's much more context I can provide. I think the the music and the visuals that you guys see here in the video, I think they perfectly encapsulate what was happening at that very moment. I I really, really like the song choice. Same. I love the hug that you gave my brother. My kuya. Yeah. Oh. Here I am about to ugly cry after laughing down the aisle. Oh, oh, ugly cry. It's <laughs> 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 like, Popo, I don't want to ugly cry right now. <laughs> yeah, so at that point, I mean, we were there. The moment was about to start. Or the moment was already there. She was in front of me. Her veil was there. She was about to cry. And we just kind of burst into laughter simply because we were so aware that this is the moment. Yeah. And we've had so many conversations about this. Are you going to cry? Are you not going to cry? <laughs> and apparently we did everything. We cried and we laughed and we made some faces and we made fun of each other. We talked. We smiled. Yeah. So. It was uh, an explosion of Emotions. all the possible feelings we had thought would happen. And it did happen. Oh my gosh, this part. The moment I saw the coffee part, my mind was blown. Because I had completely forgotten that we shot this. Yes, and not only that, I think the minds of all the viewers were also blown. Because a lot of them, a lot of the comments were saying... I wonder kung may coffee dito. That's I really lang- wonder. And then like 13 minutes in, they're like, baka walang coffee dito. And then bam! Okay, coffee. a one-minute coffee montage right in their faces. 
this was one of the mandatories. We didn't have a lot of mandatories for Bob Nicolas, but we did say there has to be a coffee segment mm. in there. I don't care what it is, kailangan meron. Sakto, we did a lot of the interviews here, here in my house, which is now our house. And sakto, we were on break and I was just like, tara, let's make some coffee. Shoot us na lang while we make it na rin. Yeah. So they shot us and it really wasn't anything special. They said, yeah, just go make your coffee and we'll just capture the shots. And we were like, yeah, cool, let's do it. So when you decide to be with them for an afternoon, you better cancel your night plans, your midnight plans, and maybe your morning plans, the morning after. Because they're really super spontaneous. I hate it, but I love it at the same time. I love what Cindy said. Just prepare for a full night because they are spontaneous. And it's true. We've had many, like, we've had many nights and trips where we're just like, Tara, let's do something. I'm game for anything. And you can catch all those nights and trips on the vlog, actually. <laughs> when Now that you know that all the people who were interviewed were coming from different circles of ours, you see the different points of views that they have and you see why they matter and why they matter to us. And I guess as a viewer, if you were to rewatch this again, you would see how their perspectives of us are so different, actually. Yeah. And even the experiences that we've had with them, a lot of them are very different. But then it's also pleasantly surprising to hear some that are exactly the same. Like yeah. one, that we're messy. Two, na surprisingly for other people, PDA pala tayo. <laughs> yeah, hey, surprise, surprise. Uh, people found that, a lot of the viewers found that very surprising because... Like I said, I don't include kisses in our YouTube channel. And, and we're not very showy on social media. Like no, we, don't we aren't. Hug, we, we are not showy at all kiss. on social media. Like we're showy in a funny way, just not in a, oh, I'm going to make you love Yeah, sweet yeah cheesy, way. kiss, kiss kind of way. So it was very surprising for most of you guys to hear on the comment section that PDA pala si Bones at Fofo, parang hindi naman. Siguro pag nakita nyo kami in public, Malalaman nyo na, oo nga no, PDA nga sila. But you know what, Bones, the audience, uh, our, our audience and our viewers here in the podcast, on the YouTube channel, and those who follow us on social media, they're a legitimate, separate point of view as well. Yeah, And they, they are. see us as not PDA, and I think that's really cool. <laughs> Super cool. Cute, cuddly, medyo PDA, pero cute, okay cuddly. lang, cute naman. In your face, but... Parang they're super in love and happy, and that's what I want also in the future. <laughs> By the way, so many people were asking us, Sinian, Sinian, because we didn't put any of the names of our friends or our family. That is Mikael's second to the youngest brother, si Emilio. He likes cute and cuddly relationships, and that's what he looks forward to also. He's never been in a cute and cuddly relationship. <laughs> He's never had a girlfriend, I think. <laughs> So yeah, if you're looking for a boyfriend, then there, Neo boy's free. <laughs> He's single. <laughs> Super <laughs> naiyak na ako dito, tsaka sinisipan. Alvaro! Alvaro's so cute. My husband now. <laughs> Nakuhanan pala yun when I said, you're my husband now. I wanted to kiss you, pa, at the end. Two of my favorite moments. Actually, no. My single most favorite moment in this video is what? Is the very end. And I'm sorry, Bones. It's not you, and it's not me either. It's of my youngest brother, Alvaro. He was so cute. And I'm so happy that the team caught it. Yeah. Because we kissed, and Alvaro is. How old are you? 2014, 2019? He was five. He's five years old. So Alvaro is five years old. And of course, he was watching his kiss. So when we separated, I looked at Alvaro right away and I was like, hey, close your eyes. <laughs> and he was like, yeah, I closed my eyes, but not really, obviously. He saw the whole thing. It was just such a nice and spontaneous and beautiful moment. It was just so cute. Oh my God. Oh, shit. Oh my god. All right. That's, yeah. That's her food. That's all her food. Yeah. Okay. And at this point, Soba has just thrown up on our bed. I'm sorry. We're going to have to end the podcast right now. We have to take care of Soba. Okay. Uh, bye, guys. Hope you sorry. It. Bye. I hope you guys enjoyed.